Hey there, Commanders. As the Thargoid War continues, it's important to know and understand one of the principal combat defense operations that helps ensure victory against the invading forces. While technically a form of AX combat zone, port defense operations are marked on your navigation panel with large caution stripes. In the corner of the station's icon will be a small symbol roughly approximating the Space Invader from Galaga. Pay close attention to this icon as its counterpart is a flame symbol that looks similar, and marks that a port has been crippled, but is not currently being attacked. Neither port type will have functioning services, but only ports marked as under attack will have combat encounters. Flow of combat follows a traditional combat zone, but with Thargoid ships. At the center of the combat zone is the port being defended. The Thargoids don't have a traditional victory condition, they only win if everybody gives up. Destroying Thargoid ships has an impact on system defense as a whole, but completing the event in totality has the greatest cumulative impact, and is the most desirable outcome if possible. This requires that players who engage with the event complete three sets of escalating waves. Wave 1 is a swarm of Thargoid scouts. Any ship can kill these craft, AX weapons aren't required. Wave 2 escalates to multiple randomly selected low to mid-tier interceptors, up to a Medusa. There can be up to three of these interceptors active at one time, with new ships arriving to replace their fallen counterparts. Scouts continue to spawn alongside interceptors and will harass the port and any ships in range. The final wave is a random number of Hydra variant interceptors, up to three in total, and is the most difficult. These Hydras will not be replaced when killed, but additional scouts and interceptors continue to spawn at intervals until the Hydras are dead. When the last Hydra dies, scouts stop spawning and must be eliminated for final completion. Each wave ends with a bulk bounty payout provided by the event and not the destruction of a specific type of ship. If you are playing alone, then departure after the Wave 2 payout is the most advisable. Solo combat against one or more Hydra variants without a finely tuned and min-max engineered ship is usually not successful regardless of skill. Group combat does have a higher success rate with less need for individual craft to be fully engineered. Port defense operations make it much easier to survive the conclusion of an encounter by allowing any player to land and get repairs at the port. While most core services are offline, repair, rearm, and refuel systems still function. A boon that was never available in the zone up until now, and one that can be reliably planned around. Group combat is the best way to see a port defense operation to its final conclusion and is the way I recommend new and intermediate players try and experience the encounter. Though I've noticed a lot of players don't understand the dynamics at play when fighting as a group, especially an uncoordinated open play group. From a mechanical perspective, a port defense operation leverages the same mechanics as a traditional Thargoid interceptor encounter, but applied on a larger scale. Over the course of a defense operation, multiple interceptors will arrive that need to be dealt with individually. So, you often end up with different clusters of ships around each interceptor, causing up to three separate fights in parallel. A common mistake that players make during these battles relates to the timing of attacks. Interceptors act as focal points that concentrate combat, which means that there is a much greater risk of collision between ships attacking the interceptor. When choosing a fight to join, try to take note of the number of combatants engaged, whether player or NPC. When comms are available with the other players and a priority has been set, then use teamwork and common sense to plan and manage who is offensive, defensive, returning to base, and providing or receiving support. This is best done over voice comms, but can be managed over the text chat in a pinch. It can be as simple as reporting your intentions, 
or asking for help if you get stuck in a bad situation. If closing to attack an interceptor, take a quick visual note of your surroundings and radar to identify possible collision risks. Since many AX builds do not use shields, collisions are more impactful to a ship's survivability, with some accidents having lethal consequences that can result in a bounty and early end of that play session as a result of the station or other players firing on you. One critical incidental consideration, and something that I cannot stress enough, is to keep track of your position relative to the station, and do not allow an interceptor to get more than 30 kilometers away from the station itself. This is because of the way that Elite Dangerous divides out and manages instancing. The typical rule of thumb is that an instance encompasses an area roughly 30 kilometers around the instance anchor. In open space, instance anchors are player ships, but around key infrastructure or points of interest, like ports, settlements, or points of interest, the anchor is the physical navigational marker you target on the nav panel. Get more than this distance away from the port, and there is a chance that any Thargoid interceptor you kill isn't going to be logged to the defensive operation. This locks up the instance for all players, and makes completing the event impossible, as completion requires that each interceptor be defeated, and new interceptors are not spawned if one drops off. This, on its own, does not guarantee that an event will complete, as other networking issues like lag, desync, and overpopulation can still create these problems, but working quickly and keeping everyone close to the port, preferably within 20 kilometers, greatly increases the chance of success. In relation to the above, when playing as part of a group, do not deploy a ship launch fighter. These little buggers cause netcode issues that will greatly increase the amount of network interference in a given instance. It can make the interceptor's rubber band so badly that they become impossible to fight, while also contributing to instance fragmentation and overall client-side lag for every other player. Even a single ship launch fighter can cause these problems in any shared instance, so it's best not to bother with them. Point defense modules are absolutely unacceptable in all group-related combat. They do nothing to kill Thargoid caustic missiles. And while they can shoot down suicide Thargon swarms only after they enter missile mode, point defenses do not differentiate between actual threats and player support projectiles, like limpets and flak rounds. Just one ship running these modules can make effective combat against Thargon swarms or the deployment of repair limpets impossible for all participants. When docking at the local port, do the best you can to minimize time on the ground or inside the port itself. The best way to do this is by clicking the Repair, Rearm, and Refuel buttons as soon as they appear on your HUD, and then click the Launch button. Do this fast enough, and the station pad will execute a shorter relaunch animation instead of automatically drawing your ship down into the hangar bay. When multiple ships are queued up, this helps ensure the most number of ships can get repairs and minimizes the risk that someone will die from waiting in line too long. Only draw down into the bay when absolutely necessary, like when regenerating prismatic shields, logging out, or following a rebuy and respawn event. That's all I have for today, so I'll catch you all later.